to our Morning Learners podcast. I'm Nelson. I'm Jeff. I'm Glow. I'm Kyle. And we're the fucking Morning Learners. And welcome back to another episode of your favorite Song of Ice and Fire podcast. We are the Morning Throners. We've got Daenerys 3, the goat, Danny. Yeah, I was talking some shit on this chap in the last She's podcast. She's so bad. I don't, hate, I don't hate it as bad, but it's not super good. I mean, it's... <laughs> no, nah, it sucked. You're, you're, I, just, don't, uh, I don't know if I was part of that conversation. Not good. Boring ass chapter. It's pretty boring, and it's just like, right now, like, Why? <laughs> like Nelson always says it. She's so far away. We're Forty chapters <laughs> into the book, like this is the third Danny chapter. Who gives a fuck what's going on in Karth? You know what I mean? Nobody gives a, these people are weird out here. <laughs> and Karth could've... is super weird. <laughs> yeah. I feel like they, he could have put more in the book that not this wasn't number three right now. You know what I'm saying? Like I guess this could have happened earlier. Just given Danny like six chapters to this point, just like double uh, the amount of Danny yeah. chapters, make us care a little more or something. I'm gonna ask yeah. you a question that I'd never asked before. Give us the timeline, Nelson. Way later, I think. I mean, her last chapter might have been way later too, though. So this is it's actually getting closer to everybody else. Everybody else is catching up to her. Or whatever. Okay. She, this is They're where I have, the gap. Yeah, I have this like about a week later than that last cat chapter, but in terms of the last Danny chapter, like three months ish. Okay. Uh I want I want to ask another question now. Can you tell us and it's okay if you just want to say no. What does excuse me? What does Danny know about the events in Westeros so far? Like, well, so she knows she knows Joffrey's in charge. That's what right. happened in the last Danny chapter. Yeah. So yeah. Right. All, my my one page my one sentence summary that I make for every uh, chapter says gets to Karth, hears Robert is dead. So she does. Uh, that was the big thing because she says that she wants to sleep drink from the usurper's skull. And I was like, does she plan on like killing him or is she going to like unbury him? I was just, yeah. I mean, here in the, in that chapter torn by a monstrous boar while hunting in the King's woods. I mean, she knows the story. She knows Ned has been seized for treason. Jorah says that's bullshit. He wasn't treasonous. She's trying to get boats. Yeah, which Boats is kind of where we pick up in this chapter, Boats right? Boats and hoes. That's yeah. like the whole theme of this chapter. Is Danny mm-hmm. has like settled in a little bit, and she's just like trying to get shit done now, and to to little success up to this point. Seemingly some success for a while, but now back to none. Not the frightened girl you met in Pentos. Um, sure, I'm only fifteen, but I'm a I have a cow now, or you know, I'm a Colleen now, or whatever, whatever it is. Callis Khaleesi. 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 Yeah, and she's. Where is it? Born a child, burned to call, and crossed the red waste in the Dothraki Sea, minus the blood of the dragon. So is your brother's. She's Jora. She says, I'm not Viserys. Viserys, no. More Rhaegar in, in you than that. But even he got killed. Robert killed him with a hammer. Even dragons can die. She said, dragons die, but so do dragon slayers. I was hurting it. Was which is, good. I think it's kind of like the recap, which is like the summary Robert is the I don't know if I think she's talking about Robert right the dragon slayer the guy who killed Rhaegar on the trident I don't know who else should be talking about dragon slayer that's the middle of dra- dragon alive Jamie uh yeah he killed her dad too so. and they call him the king slayer yeah all right so we come into the chapter with Danny and Zaro riding through the streets back from her pureborn meeting which we kind of hit on the theme of the meeting it's pretty much what they talk about the rest of the chapter is like mm-hmm. this meeting, right? Um, so, so what are the pureborns? So the pureborn confused me at first. I had to go back and look, I, and not for me, for everybody else. I guess like so they're they're the like the what the what the chapter says is the descendants of ancient kings and queens of Karth. The pureborn commanded the civic guard and the fleet of ornate galleys that ruled the straits between the seas. So, but so it, like they're like the royalty essentially, or like the lords that, that we're looking at everywhere else. I guess so, but it doesn't Earth seem rate. like it doesn't seem like that has as much weight as it does in Westeros. It seems like the, yeah. the really rich people are just as good as the the noble mm-hmm. people, even if they're. I, not. I think like, uh, like Zaro talks down on these people almost, but they're still the ones that have like it seems, it seems like they're the ones with the military. It doesn't seem like anybody's really in charge here. It just is like all right, we all have a lot of money, like. Maybe to your point, else like they have soldiers that she wanted to try and grab. Maybe they're just in kind of in charge because they have the biggest army. So the way but, I understand like the politics of of Karth is there's three factions that kind of vie for control: the pureborn, the merchants, and uh, the warlocks. 
And then the out of the merchants uh, you have th- that out of the merchants you have three factions. Gotcha. The, okay. the true the true loin brotherhood, the ancient guild of the spicers, and then the thirteen. And Zaro is a member of the thirteen. So Torm- what's the, what, tourmaline. 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 So you said there's four color. Like again, that. were you talking about the different merchant ones? Well, I thought it was those three. Yeah. Those are the merchants. That's what what I was, saying, the merchant. I was about to be like, yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's I think Zara gets into yeah. it a little bit. Everything I have on like this is pretty much from this chapter. So none of it. They didn't mm. really get into really any of this prior to this. It sounds like they all fight with the pureborn though. I, but I guess you're right. I guess that makes more sense. So the, the pureborn the merchants and the warlocks. They say the warlocks the watch three. over it all, but like I feel, I take it's like a warlock pureborn versus merchants. And then the merchants are that have inner conflicts too. All right. So um, they're riding back from this deal, like they said, and he notices her being pretty sad. And he's like, well, why are you sad? Which is kind of like a rhetorical question. Like, obviously. Why is disappointed right? in a, you look disappointed in a lost dream. And Danny's like, only a dream delayed, not lost. She's wearing this collar, right? Did she ever wear a collar when she was with um, Drogo? I don't know if... I, I don't know if it was Not mentioned that, that she was, yeah. Because didn't they say? I thought we talked about it. Because they said like that even her, even his uh, slaves wore golden collars. But that's like in the very first Danny <sighs> chapter. I think she's they're like. I thought they were. Like I think there's a point where Danny leather like, collars, where she's like wearing like a collar, and she's like she's like she's literally wearing like a golden collar or a golden necklace. Mm. Or I don't know. I feel like there's a I don't there was a moment where that happened. There might have been. I don't. She know might have tried important. to make it like a simile, like my. Whatever yeah. is like a collar. Gotcha. But here but, she um, actually is wearing a collar. I say girls wearing chokers is mm, sexy. <laughs> it just gets glow off. I'm not about um, the choker. I think the 90s are coming back, man. You, you don't have the long to wait. <laughs> dude, the chokers were the chokers all went over away the place already. in college, they were, dude. They were cool for like Everyone two was years and then they went away college. again. No, they came, they came back for a hot second. I feel like. Yeah, maybe but they, they went away again. Well, maybe they'll come back for you, Glow. You just need to find a girl that's really into it. Um, another thing she thinks of herself is that the people that she went to see, and just kind of like, I feel like everybody here in Karth doesn't look at her as a queen. She's just like the amusement of the week. Well, yeah, so she gets to that, right? Because this collar that she was wearing was supposed to be like anti-poison, right? It had this like anti-poison gemstone in it. And she's like, they did because they normally poison their wine when they give it to give it to like the people but she's like they didn't even think to offer me any like they didn't even give the people me water. i thought were dangerous yeah yeah and she's like they didn't even fucking give me water let alone wine like, so like why, think, why am i wearing this yeah thing? So she's like they don't think anything on me i'm not a queen i'm not i'm just nothing i'm just an afternoon's like amusement because i have some dragons okay so it kind of goes back into our conversation that we we're having earlier about how they don't really have royalty and it's not really the same like kind yeah. of power structure or whatever so they don't they don't have that respect for her there's no cultural respect for her at least yeah the pure blood bloods to me seem like the royal family back in like 1950s when they actually had some power but you don't um, think they have any power now and influence no i'm saying the, the royal family ha- doesn't have nearly as much power as it used to gotcha 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 like well, you mean I feel like, like the actually the royal pa- family in england is what you're comparing them to yeah gotcha. like they have they 1950s had power. royal family yeah, 1950s royal family where they actually had power and influence. Gotcha. Now they just have influence. Gotcha. Okay. Mm. Makes sense. I guess I don't know. I don't know how the politics of England work. I mean, I haven't read up on my 1950s English. I'm so. just saying like even nowadays, there's still a parliament, right? Like so what, Carth is just like England without the without like any government? If it was just run by like the merchants, like pure. Well, there's also the merchants and. Pure chaos is what it sounds like. like I feel like but... the, the, in this place, the royal blood is still the ones who have the guards, which means they're still the ones that keep the peace. Again, we don't really get into it, so it does. It's not, I don't know if it's worth talking about, but that's how it, mm-hmm. I don't know how it works any other way. I guess unless merchants just like have their own like mercenary sell swords and stuff like that that are, but then are they actually keeping peace or is it just like them always? Well, that's the pure bloods. That's what I'm saying. The pure bloods have power. Yeah, because they have the army. Gets yeah. back yeah. to the the riddle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> who has the power? <laughs> so a lot of the talk about like obviously she was going for the ships and their army. Uh, they pretty much said no right away, but. Sounds like they just wanted to see the dragon, and we know that she has Rhaegal with her, and that's yep. the only one. And uh, she's also dressed up in not Dothraki fashion, but Carthian booby fashion. Booby out. She's got a booby out. Yeah, she's got a booby out. She's got a tit out. Tit out for the boys. Tit just out for out the boys. Now, that's a strange uh, deal. Yeah. But that's how they all are, though. She knew that when they came in, right? It's just Yeah. That was, she said that, that when they came in, they were all wearing that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think they like switch sides so like one doesn't get more tan than the other? 
<laughs> I think it's always the left one is what they said, but I might be wrong. Oh. I'm not sure. What you're saying makes sense, I guess. Sometimes you got to switch it up, I, I would say. Yeah, I mean, what if one gets sunburned, dude? You got to protect that Maybe shit. that's just like a sexy-ass tan line to have in Karth, you know what I mean? And they're also called yeah, the Milkmen, so. which makes me think, like, is it because their skin are super pale? So, like, I feel like they're not getting tan at all. Yeah. 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 So, in another part of this conversation, we it's a pretty long deal when she's in the in the... What do they call it? Palanquin. The palanquin. Um, he's like, well, what did they say? And she's like, oh, obviously they said no. And he's like, well, what about the ones that we paid off? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so they tried to pay off three of them. I don't know if you want to read their names Mathos, or not. Mathos. No. I don't know if they, they say all their names here, but they say them all a little bit later. Mathos, Malawarin, Wendelo, Cardeth, Cardeth, and Egon Immerse the Exquisite. Sounds like a cool crew. The first guy just said nothing when she was like petitioning to them. The second guy praised the way she spoke, but like didn't like agree. And the third guy refused, like just like everybody else did. But he wept afterwards, right? Because Zara was asking her, like, "Oh, did you weep?" And she's like, "No, I didn't fucking weep. I'm the blood of the dragon. Not, the blood of the dragon doesn't like weep. Pussy. Dragons but don't weep." She says, like, from what she's learned in her time in Karth, like everyone just like weeps all the time. It like it shows sophistication, right? That you're and, you're, and, you're, and, you and care in a about second, people, like. I guess. In a second, Zara starts weeping. Yeah, like, <laughs> but she also had to do all these like weird her. things to even like like jump through a bunch of hoops to even get a meeting with these people. She had to make a sacrifice in the temple of memory, offer the traditional bribe to the keeper of the long list, sent the traditional persimmon to the opener of the door, and finally received the traditional blue silk slippers, summoning her to the hall of a thousand thrones. And she says she's wearing slippers now, which makes me think she had to wear the blue silk slippers to get into the hall of a thousand thrones. Probably. Probably. So how many Pureborn are there? Because the way it sounded from the Hall of a Thousand Thrones makes it sound like there's tons of them. The House of Representatives, where there's like 400 some of them, and and she only bribed three. So what did she expect is kind of what I was at here. But I can't imagine there being that many cooks in the kitchen. I was thinking yeah, like 20. I, agree with Jeff. I was, yeah, I was thinking like 20. It's kind of like... Maybe I was just trying to put them on par with the 13 and like just put them in like in that close to that number area but i yeah i don't know if, if that's based on anything that just a wrap out what i was thinking I in guess, my 20. mind it's like the heron hall deal where it's like oh it's the like a thousand hearth room right or is that heron hall or wherever it was yeah the hall of a thousand yeah. hearths and it's like 400 or whatever like it was still a lot but like 74 or something like that yeah yeah not even for us so I, I imagine it being something like that I think it was the Hall of 100 Hearths, and it ended up being like 67 or something Okay, like that. so but, that's still a decent yeah, amount. still an exaggeration, yeah. A thousand fireplace would be a lot of fire. I might be wrong. It might be, a, it might be a thousand hearths. I don't remember. I don't remember. I just remember it being a thing. So Go back to your notes, Nels. Let us know. All right, so we kind of talked on the faction of the merchants, right? Spicers, the Brotherhood, and then the 13. We found out Zara was a 13. Uh, and then there was a slight mention of the warlocks, which we did meet Piat Pri in the last hundred, hundred hearths. Thank you for checking. Thanks, You're Stiles. welcome. We did so, meet Piat Pri in the last chapter for the. Didn't warlocks. we met somebody from all of them? Correct. Uh, no, no, we met horns. one from the thirteen, one from the Brotherhood, and one from Quinn. Okay, yes, yeah, th- three people came and met them outside the gates of their city. That was Zaro, yeah. Piat Pri, and Quaith, who popped up again in this chapter. Was she a part of? I think she's just she's a solo cat. She's a lone wolf. Who's I think. that? She she's a ladder climber. Quaith. Quaithy. The one with the mask. Yeah, the one who shows yeah. up here. Quaith. Yeah, or I think she is in the warlocks, but I, that's that's me. Okay, she's one of the so. third people that she was also she's one of the hiding shows her up blue lips back in the at the old city. Is that why she's masked up though? Yeah. We also get a little bit of uh, Danny's being a little bit of an uh, entrepreneur as well. Yeah. So after they explain like how the bribes didn't work out, right? Zara's like, I should. The Car- Carthian shouldn't be faithless. I should weep for the treachery of men. And Danny's like, I should re- weep for the treachery of my gold. And uh, she's like, we should. We're like, whoa, you don't have any money. She's like, what? What if I? What if I sent? Because so she spent all her money, basically all her money, and we're mm. in, which makes you think, like, because I think in the last chapter, Danny didn't have any money, right? She was right. literally fresh out of the red way. She didn't. So like here, she's like, I spent all my money. You're like, how'd you even get money? She goes back and explains it here in a second, but she says she spent basically everything on these bribes, and they just didn't work out. So here, she, she suggests. Go ahead. I was gonna say yeah. She is. She's like, well, Zara, what if I have Jora go and say, hey, you guys didn't help me. Give me my money back. I want a refund. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, well, how would you like to die in my castle tonight? <laughs> like, good. yeah, they'll call us a sor- some like uh, band of assassins called the Sorrowful Men because they always say they're sorry. That's a, the- that's, so a dope, sorry. that's a dope deal. 
So then he says this weird like figure of speech. It is wisely said that it's easier to milk the stone cow of Faros than to wring gold from the pureborn. Which we don't know what that I don't means. Think it's but that weird. It's but probably like milk. a catu- statue of a cow. You can't, you can't milk, milk a stone. stone. Yeah. yeah, you can't milk yeah. a statue. Yeah. So it's so easier to get blood Dan- from a Danny's stone. Danny's like, I don't know who the sparrow is, but what the fuck? Isn't it? Yeah, what is like squeezing blood from a stone? That's like a, a common saying. Or a turnip. Right? Yeah. 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 I never heard the turn up, but I've read the stone. Yeah. All right. Um, so then this is so we get like a, a decent like think back here, right? So now for like the next little bit, Danny's thinking back on her time in Karth up to this point, and she kind of explains how she gets. First off, she explains some of what I was saying earlier. Um, there's three factions for the guilds: ancient guild of the Spicers. Now that I have the actual names in front of me, I'm not going to butcher them. The Tourmaline Brotherhood and the Thirteen of Karth, which is where Zaro's from. She's she then explains that like Zaro has been like really been helping her since she got here. She doesn't know what the fuck she would have been done doing without like mm-hmm. she'd been fucked here. I mean, he's homed her. He set up like a signature sign up deal to like get her some money. Yeah, it's exactly. What it it's what it seems hey, like. Come like her shit to see her dragons. Come on, come on. Yeah, they don't exactly explain it, but like whatever it was, it was his idea and. Basically, everyone was coming up from all over to see the dragons, and Zara made sure that she was making a dime off it. It wasn't just like a mm. free free petting zoo. Yeah, it was like zoo. a bus game. Do you think he was taking a little bit off the top, you know, a little 5% off the top? Maybe. Who knows? It seems like most Probably. of what she was getting was like gifts, not just money. So it was like hard to take 5% off of like like, what, like some of the shit she's getting, right? I mean, maybe not lace. 5% just, off a juggling show? So some of the stuff she's getting right is lace from Mir, saffron from UT. Dragon glass from a side by a shy by the shadow, two zort black and white striped zorses from the Jogos Nye. Why so, can't they just call them zebras? I don't know. <laughs> I'm assuming they're zebras though. But yeah, you can't take ten percent of a zebra of two zebras. Maybe it's but a zebra you take 10% that probably the rest made it with a horse. You can milk it. <laughs> milk a zebra. You, could, you can milk anything with nipples. She so she's got a bunch of shit and she sold everything but a crown and it's a pretty dope crown of three dragons. Well, there's, yes, the crown, but there's one other weird thing I want to mention that she got before we move on, Jeff, is a widow gave her a dried corpse of her husband covered with the crust of silvered leaves. Such remnants were believed to have great power, especially when the dead sword... The dead was a sorcerer, which this one was. Like, what yeah. the fuck? That's some nah, weird ass shit. Take, you take she that, that right? for sure. <laughs> was it was it part of this guy? Like, or was it his entire corpse? Dude, I don't know. That's what I was wondering. Was like the crusting, like a post death thing that they did to it, or was it just like a thing that was a a part of this guy's body because he was a sorcerer? He just happened. His bones were no. I assume the crust silver was, crusted. Was, it was like mummification stuff, gotcha. but I think it was the way he died. He was doing some sorcery and a bunch of silver leaves. Just to <laughs> on him. If somebody offers you a dead body, you definitely take it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. I mean, I'm sure well, it depends how fresh you don't just yeah, not fresh, pass up a dead I think body. It's fresh, you can sell like I think it like yeah, organs go for it, a lot. Depends how fresh it is. It was a dried corpse. You can always bury it and then see how long Beef it jerky, takes dude. to decay. Just like. We were talking about human last turkey. Podcast. Sorry, not beef. So, it's future. So now she gets a little uh, Viserys flashback. She's the beggar queen. Yeah, she is the beggar, which queen. is why she won't sell the crown. Right? She was not going to do it. Viserys did because that's when they started calling him that. But she basically is that. I mean, she's begging for everything else. She's doing exactly what Viserys crown. did before, but now she has dragons. And so she, she's, she's, and she's has, not begging. And she's she kept her crown on pay her head. me. You can see my fucking dragons, dog. That's begging. That's what That's I was talking about begging. earlier when I said she's busking, right? So like the guys that are playing guitar on the corner, or you know, like doing magic tricks on the corner mm-hmm. in the city and shit like that. Is the circus busking? No, it's a business. But but like she's just like some are random strippers person begging. She's like a street no, performer. It's yeah. a business. Yeah, that's busking. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's like, busking, so, okay. I mean that's. Kind People of are it. coming to their establishment, paying to see her one titty and dragons. <laughs> Sounds like to me she's a stripper with dragons. I don't, I don't, don't care titty about her one titty, titty honestly. I don't know. Not they true. see enough t- one titties on the day. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. So we do get mention of Jorah again next because uh, he's not with her. Just the blood. Just the bloodies. Yeah. She. They got what? One in front, one on the left, and one behind. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so she considers she she thinks that like sometimes she just wishes she go back to that old ass city that they had to themselves and just make it awesome. But she's like, no, that would be admitting defeat. Even though I don't know, that could be pretty dope. 
But she's, she good. thinks that's yeah, admitting like defeat. Set your base. Yeah, she's she takes it as admitting defeat, and she's like, I'm going to win where Viserys did not because he has dragons. Kind of like I said before, before we were saying she's getting more begging because of the dragons. Here she's thinking to herself, I'm going to fucking win the whole deal because I got dragons and he didn't. Um, but yeah, back in the palanquin, we got the Blood Riders surrounding it, and she's mm-hmm. chilling in there with uh, Zaro, who mm-hmm. he's got jewels in his nose. So the, yeah, they said, they said it the first time they see him, and they mentioned it again. That she says it makes him look look kind of weird, but yeah, it looks like a bird. So pretty much, the Blood Riders are pushing everybody out of the way. Like, get out of the way, Mother Dragon's coming through, you know. So oh yeah, so they're drinking wine, right? Zaro's poured him some yeah. wine. Danny goes and drinks some, and Rhaegal takes a, a sniff of it and doesn't like it. Makes some hiss or some bad face or something. <laughs> And Zara's like, yeah, your dragon knows better. This wine isn't that great. There's a place over here that I could take you. Um, this great arbor wine. No, no, the arbor is her place. He said the Jade Sea across the Jade across Sea. The Jade Different Sea. Thing. We'll go on my pleasure barge, and she's like, the arbor has the best wine. Let's uh, go okay. there. I'm, I'm mistaken that. Yeah, she talks right. about. I didn't she, know if they called the the narrow sea just something different, like if they had a different name for it. No, nope. but it's a, yeah, it's a different. Where's sea. the Jade Sea? That little bay. Yo, you want the map? Yeah, let's go to map. <laughs> I was going to pull the map up a little bit later. You'll see it in a little so bit. So pretty much the whole time, though, he's he's like trying to sweet talk her, right? And like that's that's been going on since the beginning even. And I mean, they get into it at the end, but it, it, he just seems so weird. And like he's, you guys even kind of brought it up earlier with like, is he taking 5 or 10% off the top? I don't know if he's doing any of that. I think he's still just trying to gain her favor himself. He's trying to get trying that to. hand in mirage. We learn a potential reason why at the end, yeah. So Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like the whole way through, I was feeling that though. Like it was kind of like, He's like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'll mm-hmm. help you however I can. And you, and she even says like, I wouldn't be anywhere if it wasn't for him. And now he's like, here we can go on this, we can go on this boat ride. And the implication, you know, when you're out at sea. Yeah. It's a, so this is all like him doing like. There's like a big part of him doing like flattery the whole through the whole chapter. But I think it like picks up right here. Well, I will say that when she when they're doing the whole wine thing and she's mentioning red wine, she says that packs are red wine was on the Targaryen side during the rebellion. Yeah. I don't know if we knew that directly. Last I guess dude's you still fighting with her. Because he wasn't like Aaron's Baratheons or whatever, but... Um, Who's he fighting for now? He's probably um, with the Tyrells. The South. Yeah, the Tyrells. Where the Tyrells are. He's probably one, one of those armies that are at Bitter Bridge. Um, or maybe he was at Storm's End with, with Stannis. Yeah, I don't know. And she said, well, well, we need to go to the Arbor. You can come with us. Um, and I'll give you the best wine you ever had, but we need a warship and not your your pleasure pleasure boat. That's your little it's fucking like, barge. I don't think this is necessarily like an actual like suggestion by Danny. I think this is all just like kind of like subtext. Like he's like, oh, let's do these like fancy trips, and she's like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm going to war. Right? She's yeah. like, we're going here, and this is what we're doing. But if we're going there, we're gonna need warships, not pleasure barges. Yeah. Type I mean, shit. even even his next like he keeps going. He's like, but I can give you this. I can give you that. I can give you. I can show you the world. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, no, fuck you. Like, you're taking me to Westeros now or you're not coming. Or, um, yeah. I love how, like, she's like, that's he, all she wants. He keeps saying how much he loves her and how beautiful she is. And she's like, dude, I see all the guys you bring around your yeah, palace. You what are you fucking you talking have boys about? Around your palace. You don't give a fuck about my titty. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not even checking out my areola. <laughs> but, like I said about that, though, to me, and I mean the guys and stuff, like, whatever, that might be different. But the, just her boob, like, that's just natural, right? Like, at this point, like, he sees that all the time in this place. Uh, I could see I that. Right, I can see I like mean, most you people, know, every but... time I see a titty, I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah. she seems I mean, also. If, if a tits are popping out, I'm gonna look at a titty. She's... But you don't see one every day on every woman that or yeah, every person that you come across. If everyone just walked around titties out, are we? Would we be? I check out every I mean, ass I see. see. You don't see. You're not like, oh my god, look at all these dudes' nipples. I'm seeing, right? Yeah, like, it's exactly. a normal thing. No, but I check out all the girls' tits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if guys if guys had to cover up their nipples when they were outside, then seeing a nipple would be a bigger deal. Is what that's Kyle what I'm saying. saying. I, I think yeah. I agree with Kyle on this one. Yeah, uh, I don't. So like, I, I don't agree. Alone isn't that much. I think she's still suggesting very heavily that he isn't sexually interested in her at all, and she's like pretty. Confident. Yeah, yeah, and I, I like I said, there's there's other reasons there. I think that one that she's pointing at though doesn't make sense. Um, but so pretty much she's like, no, I like I need a boat, fucking warships. Give me some of your ships, and he's like, 
I only have a few trade I, or no, he's like, I do have a, a bunch of trade ships, but but who knows, who knows how are. many I have. They could all be sinking be currently. Sinking right They're now. all out People there. People just dip on me. Yeah. Like, Mutiny. Yeah. Like he's like, he's, he's a really he's beating a around the bush The longer here. we talk, the and, less ships I have. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's essentially the same thing that happened at the pure bloods or pure borns. I forget what their name is now. Pure born. But where they, they, they said no, but they said it in a nice way is what she said. And that's pretty much what he's trying to say here. Right. Like, He's like she calls you know, him out on it too. She's like, "You speaking nicely, just like the Pureborn did, but you're telling me the same thing. You're 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 saying no." She yeah. like calls him out on exactly what you're saying, Kyle. And Zara's oh, yeah, like, you're right. Down here. "He's like, why do you even want that throne? It sounds cold, and I can't like bear the thought of the barbs like pricking your cute behind." And uh, he's like, "Just be here. Like, Karth will be your kingdom. I'll be your king. It'll be great." Mm-hmm. Just fuck that. I'm going. And basically, he's like. If we get bored of Karth, we can just vacation everywhere. Like I'll just give you Lily whatever you want, except for Westeros. It's except pretty much Westeros. what he's, it's pretty yeah. much what he's Everything talking. but yeah. like we're not going that way. Yeah, anything that, that doesn't far. involve fighting people. Yeah. I mean to sail to Westeros and drink the wine of vengeance from the skull of the usurper. Da, da, da. That's Jeff's clip from earlier. Yep. Yeah. Uh all right. So she's like, look, you got thirteen people. Each give me ten ships. <laughs> He's like, well, then you have 130 ships and no crew. And you're like, yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll buy pay them. them. And you're like, you got nothing, girl. Like He does make a good a point. Jerk. He's like, you could buy people, but it's like the amount you'd have to pay to buy somebody is not the same that I'd have to pay to buy somebody to go on a, on a route because A, they don't give a fuck about your cause and it's deadly. What I ask them to do yeah. isn't deadly, so they'll do it. And what you're asking them to do is deadly and they don't give a fuck about it. It's not like they're fighting for their homeland or anything. So it's going to be 100% because you're giving them a fuck ton of money is the only reason somebody would do this. Yep. So then she's like, "Well, fuck you guys. I'm going to go to the other people." I like how I like how he calls her the sweet star of his heaven, which is kind of her line about Drago as well. Sun stars, sun and stars. Sun and stars. Well, she well, she should be the moon, right? For Drago, she was the moon. She was the moon or something, moon of his life yeah. or something like that. Probably, yeah. No, I guess I'm just saying that's another like I. Maybe it's bad writing from George, or it's like a hint at it, a callback from George. But he's like, "Look, the Spicers in the Brotherhood—they're not going to help you either." And then she's like, "All right, fuck it. You guys leave me no choice." War- I pray to the bulls to the war. Five primitives, and he's like, "No, don't do it. Anything." They have that. blue lips, and those lips only talk lies or something like that. Yeah, he's like, "They don't have anything to give you." He's like, "They can't give you anything because they don't have anything to give." Heed the wisdom of the one who loves you. Like I said, this dude is just blowing so much smoke the whole time. Oh, I feel like, I feel like it's also just like a Carthine thing. They just like they Love talk everything. like very like over they over exaggerate or dramatic and... about everything. Yeah, yeah. Poets, they're all poets, and they don't even know it. He's like she. She's like I wouldn't have to go to the world if you just helped me. He's like, and he's like, what do you mean? I've literally given you my whole house, like servants. I've given you like so much. What do you mean if I've helped you? Like I've helped you so much. But you haven't given me what I wanted. I want the throne. Tumbling monkeys, spitting snakes. Like, what else could you want, right? He's like, I gave you an army of, of shiny soldiers. And she's like, <laughs> he's talking about gold. There's not the soldiers I need. And then this is where they start riding up on this crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Stop! Stop the palaquin! No, why Why is the palaquin I thought it was. Uh, I forgot what it was. I thought it was uh, like an emergency. Like, I thought they were about to get, like, attacked. But I didn't. I didn't remember. Just some, just some fire mage. Another street from performer. Mama. Just a little fire mage doing his deals. Building up a little ladder in the sky. Danny <laughs> wants to take a peek, so she pops out, hops in the back of Jogo's horse. This is where she watches this whole deal from. And yeah, this guy... Watch. There's cut purses, bro. Yeah, so there's also cut purses. Danny no- says, claims to have noticed them before being told. She ain't see shit. And they're just like little kids running through the crowd. She says she knows them from when she was in the free cities. Uh, what's this guy doing? He's building a fire <laughs> ladder, ladder, and then he climbs it and vanishes in thin air. Yeah, and the ladder vanishes Where behind him as he climbs you? it. And they built the ladder. And a, and a week ago, a week ago, he couldn't fucking hide a coin behind somebody's ear. About a week ago, yeah. Does does somebody actually climb a ladder? What are we talking about? No, there's an episode of South Park where it's like, where were you when they built the ladder to heaven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this thing's also 40 feet high. It's no rinky-dink ladder. It's 40 feet high. I know, this is wild. And the dude climbs to the top. And he disappears. And then he disappears. And he disappears. Yeah, the ladder disappears behind him, and he disappears. Yeah. And Quaithy says and it's bam, not a trick. Quaithy shows up. Joe goes, like, it's fine, trick. Quaithy's like, not a trick. Out of nowhere, first off. Where the fuck did Quaithy come from? Yeah. She, well, she there, fucking, guys. bam, 
as he goes away, bam, he came, she came in. <laughs> yeah. She's like the varies of, uh, of this city. It seems like kinda, yeah. she's just kind of everywhere. Pops out. Yeah. It pops out of nowhere. So, so read the Quaith quote. No trick. Half a year gone. That man could scarcely wake fire from dragon glass. He has some small skill with powders and wildfire, sufficient to entrance, entrance a crowd while his cut purses did their work. He could walk across hot coals and make burning roses bloom in the air, but he could no more aspire to climb the fiery ladder than a common fisherman could hope to catch a kraken in his nets. So Danny talks about how the ladder's gone now. Everyone's kind of just going about their business. Soon they're going to figure out that all their uh, purses are empty. But hang, hang on. This being like a standard trick is weird to me, I guess. It's just like, yeah, climb the fiery ladder. Like that's something like that is so I, it's a standard spell. I guess so. For for fire mages. It's so weird. It's such a know. weird spell. I think we are heard you a fire about mage, bro? Quaith before. No? I don't know. I don't remember. When Danny Furtz me- meets her, the woman in the lacquered mask said in the common tongue of the Seven Kingdoms, I am Quaith of the Shadow. We come seeking dragons. Yeah, so I think that's that's all we really have. Of, uh, I don't have, unless she was in the last Danny chapter. I don't think she was. No, she wasn't. Yeah, so I guess that's all we have. Where did we see that? That's when she first meets her, outside the walls of that like deserted city. Okay, yeah, yeah. They all like, exactly. like somebody said, like Pi Pri says something in Dothraki, I think. Somebody says something in Valyrian, and then she says something in the common tongue. I know, but I, I guess what I'm saying though is that like this fire ladder that doesn't seem like it's like it seems like such a weird party trick to have. It's Maybe like, he just doesn't even know how powerful he is. He's like, well, fuck, let me build this ladder real quick and climb up it. <laughs> <laughs> Disappear at the top. Yeah, I don't know. And then, well, so it's so commonplace, and everybody just is like, yeah, that whatever, and they walk away. Like it's not like holy shit, this dude just climbed this giant ladder. Well, the, you you saw the show. The show's over. You don't you freak leave. out. You don't stand there and wonder Whoa! like what the hell did we just see? Like where did he go? He must. Have, he he probably back? did this trick like four times already today. No. So like, like hold on. And I saw <laughs> you go to the movies. Uh, hold on, hold on. Like what's the common day uh, comparison to this? Right. You go to the movies. You see Inception in IMAX. First time ever seeing Inception. Mind blown. You're like, what the fuck was that? You don't just sit in the movie theater for like sometimes an hour you sit there. Think sometimes you sit there. I'm for just saying, minutes. like, yeah, it, it sticks We've with you. We've sat in a movie away. and talked you about just, it for a couple minutes, day. for sure. You talk about it in the car ride home, or no? Nah, we, I've been mind blown a couple times in the movie where, like, nope, got it. If I'm talking about it in the theater, it's because I'm waiting for a post credit scene. If that's why, if I'm in the theater talking about a post movie, that's why. I'm, sure. You know what I mean, Kyle? I don't think it's weird. I think a movie's a way different. Yeah, I think that's this is how I think about it. Imagine being on the boardwalk. You got those side, literally magicians. Like this is this is being on the boardwalk, and they're doing like these little fucking tricks, and they fucking pulling balls out of their asshole, and then it's (laughs) like, okay, well, like, all right, I'm done. Let's walk away. It's exactly what you do. You're like, wow, that was really cool. Walk away. This is like something way better than a magic trick, though. This is this is like. This is like you go to some that you go watch you go watch fucking Evil Knievel jump the Grand Canyon and there's a giant crowd there watching and yeah. you're all like holy oh. shit we just saw this happen like Danny also has know, a like, dragon on her shoulder but then so Evil I think Knievel that rides off into the desert and then what do you do like so like you say holy shit that was crazy and you get back in your car you, you, and you go to the fucking you don't, burger you don't joint just jump in the car and, oh, <laughs> you get a fucking burger <laughs> you know what I mean like you get out of there you don't just hang around <laughs> at the great cave for no reason alright let's go get a fucking whopper so <laughs> so I think that's but what Kyle's saying is what Quaith is saying I think kind of too is like or well, your, what your point one of your points is like this this ladder isn't like a common trick. She that's what she's saying. She's like last year, this guy or last week or whatever, whatever she says, last year, this guy was just doing common tricks, and now he's doing the fucking fiery ladder, which is like the equivalent to a common fisherman, a common magician in this guy's case, catching a fucking kraken in his neck, like doing the fucking the trick from the prestige. You, you feel me? You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah I feel you, dog. Pull, to pull that back up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on, she's like. Yeah, hold on. There's a, what's the last Quaithy quote? There's a second one right after that. Quaithy says, do you know why he's able to do this? And Daenerys is like, why? Quaithy's like, because of you. Aren't you the mother of dragons? And touches her on the wrist. And Joe goes like, dude, get your grimy fucking hands off her. You must leave the city soon, Daenerys Targaryen, or you will never be permitted to leave it at all. Danny's wrist still tingled where Quaith had touched her. Where would you have me go? She asked. 
To go north, you must journey south. To reach the west, you must go east. To go forward, you must go back. And to touch the light, you must pass beneath the shadow. A shy? Danny thought. Well, Danny is basically like, what am I going to find in a shy? And Quay says truth and then dips out. No one sees her. Bang. Right. Out of here. Bowed away. Bowed backwards and out of out of the deal. Bang, bang, bang. Weird ass and, Quay Yeah. And then Danny's like, all right, fuck it. Let's get back into Palaquin. Take me, take me home. Yep. So she gets back to her room and she's like, oh, got to feed these dragons. And she's like, fuck. It's going to be a long time till these people, these, these dragons are trained and ready to take over my kingdom. Well, in hindsight, yep. though, like she's telling her to go all these different places. Well, by the time you do all these fucking traveling that Quaithi's telling you, your dragons might be big enough. But she didn't have a reason to believe this lady yet either, though, right? Like, yeah, I mean, I mean, she's got no relationship she with She just that. watched a dude climb a ladder, so why can't she believe this dude or this lady? And that lady came out of nowhere. I mean, is she just going to believe every person that she runs into? Because that's what she's done so far. Not if she keeps listening to Jorah. No one's ever lied in Essos. That's a fact. Except they all call each other liars constantly. If you, the thing is, if you're always lying, you're always telling the truth. Mm. Huh? No. The thing about that. a dishonest man. You can, you can always, always trust, trust a dishonest, dishonest, dishonest man to be dishonest. <laughs> so honest men you got to watch out for. You never know when they're going to do something incredibly <laughs> stupid. All right, Jorah pops in. Danny, Danny needs some counsel. Come, come sit down, Big Daddy. Daddy, I need some counseling. And they pretty much talk about what happened all day. Well, well hang on. First, Zaro kind of it's like I don't know if I'd be going to to a shy. Right, the truths they have there might not make you smile. Yeah, that's before she gets gets home, right? And he gives her more wine, and he goes on kind of sweet talks her for some more here. Yep. And then now is when yeah, she gets the I, door. I skipped over the, the fifth. It, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I always Thank you, Cal. hit everything. You got to keep them. You're right. It wasn't sometimes. that important. But pretty much, like, it just shows all the infighting of these groups, I guess. You know, they're all kind of vying for her ear. Yeah, don't trust that person. Don't listen to what they said. Listen to what I say. Do what I want. Yeah. It's basically only Zaro right now saying that, though. The fucking mm-hmm. pure bloods are like fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Zaro seems to want to like all for himself. Kind of, it's his take right now, which is probably lucrative for him too. Somehow, even if he's not taking ten percent, I'm sure well, they he's tell us a way. why it's lucrative. Well, yeah, but I'm sure he's still finding a way to make like a dime off her. Even now, I bet if he's like anything like a good merchant, you know what I mean. Like if he's like a little finger type. He's finding a way Which to like. Seems like he is. He owns like a bunch of hotels in Karth, right? And now like this, the city's fucking full because everyone's coming to see dragons type thing. That's that like Zaro's play. But yeah, so George shows up and he, she's like, "All right." He's like, "How'd the day go? What's up with the pureborn?" And she's like, "Not good. Didn't go. Fuck didn't, those guys. Didn't happen." Zaro also wants to marry me again. He asked again. Jor, how how much does that burn Jor inside? Like that motherfucker. So that's the thing. Is like, I wonder if what Jor says here is like honest. You know what I mean? Like uh, is he? I forget. What's is he quote? being truthful? So she says. I trust it. She says, "Zaro, uh, Zaro's assured me that like when you get married in Kart, like property is an exchange. Like it's not like you get fifty percent of the other person's shit. Like that's not how it happens in Karth. And Jor's like, ah, yeah, but he did leave out one thing. Each person gets to ask one possession of the other person, and you're not allowed to say no. One dragon goes, would make him the richest first? person." She says one dragon. You just, you just ask, ask back. back. <laughs> are there are there ass There's backs? no takesy backsies, Jeff. Everyone knows that. I don't know. <laughs> Not in the rules. Well, what if she just says, uh, "My one request is that you don't request a dragon." I think it's like a physical possession, right? Well, at least from what Jor explains, he says one dragon would make him one of the most power, the most powerful man in Essos, and one ship would help your cause, but little or something like that, right? Like yep. that was pretty much. So, it. but my the thing is, I'm just like. If Jor, like again, I don't, I'm not like, I don't know if Jor, Jor's head over heels with Danny, but there's definitely like a little something there. I don't know if he would go to lengths to like lie about something like this, but it is like, if he is like head over heels, like who else can she really trust? Like how many even people, how many people even speak the language in Garth? That's what I was going to say is I think, I think he is the, the only person so far that has proven his loyalty to her every step of the way right but he did it he's selling her out to fucking uh varies the whole time yeah like he's literally reporting when she's pregnant like that came from jora like i don't think that's happening anymore but like yes it's not like he was loyal from the get-go he was a little he was a little backstabber behind her back 
But I mean, even even right here, he's like the pure blood refused, pure born refused you. I keep calling pure bloods. I think that's Harry Potter, but pure born refused you, and he and she's like, as you said, they would like. Like, yeah. I should be listening to you more is pretty much where she's at right now. I think like kind of like you were saying earlier, Jorah's definitely, I don't think you were saying about Jorah, but you were saying that she's just trusting everybody. I think Jorah is very in the trust nobody camp. But again, part, and I don't know, maybe some of this is just like, I'm projecting onto it. I feel like maybe Jorah's like saying trust no one so that he can have all the power and not in like a, pa- mm. like I'm a power hungry type person, but just like I'm a jealous of Danny's attention person type thing. I think Jorah's been around the block too. I think long. he's too like, infatuated he with her right now. He's like, no, like I I can protect you. Like even like to the part like I I'll protect you. Like not your blood riders. Like let me protect you. Let let me counsel you. Let me decide where we go next. You know. Yeah. I think he just wants to be that guy in her life. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I think it's that. I'm just saying like all his actions. They both ser- they serve both purposes. Like they sure. could be completely genuine or they could be like a little base out of jealousy and it just gives me like the pause like eh, was jordan mm. being 100 percent honest here i think i'm i'm 90 percent leaning he's being honest about this but like yeah i believe things like who 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 does she talk to she can talk to the Dothraki people can she really talk to many carthian people i'm doubting I, it i don't know what they speak i thought i don't know I'm assuming which language. then makes you which which then makes you wonder how jorah found out like how did he, who's he talking to? Because he That's doesn't true. know her language. That's true. Yeah, but he's been in Essos longer than she has, though. She's talking to the pure. She's talking to the pure bloods. Also, in the second in the second chapter, she did say like, "Go down." I did it to you now too, Jeff. Pure born. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. In the second chapter, I do think she said like, "Go to the docks and get news." We've been like how, without yeah. news for how long? Jorah, you go because you know more languages than my blood riders. Okay. Like, you know. Well, and by more languages, it just means more than Dothraki, right? He knows at yeah, least I mean, he might have common like tongue in Dothraki. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. George has been around the block. He knows people. He knows the area better. Yeah, well, he he could at least talk to like sailors and stuff like that. Where Dothraki, there's no Dothraki sailors. Next topic of combo. She brings up Quaithi and the Fire Mage, and George's like, "Let's get the fuck out of here." <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that really what happens? Is that how that goes down? Yeah, pretty much. She said, "I'd be glad to leave the city." And she's like, "Do you want to go to a shy?" And he's like, "I don't know about a shy, but we just need to get out of here." And we should east. go east. And we, we should go, we should east. go east. Yeah. She's like, "Fuck the- that, we're going west." <laughs> so here's where we'll pull, we'll pull up the map here. Map, map. To me, map, east map. is a shy. I mean, like it's that a shy is east. If you say, "How do you get to eat to a shy from where Danny is?" I would tell you, is you it go east. Are you sure it's not ass hay? I am. It might be ass hay. Ass hay. It's a shot. Ass hay. <laughs> Bang. Here's Faros. This is Faros right here on Great Moro, Morak. That's where the stone cow is. Just point, <laughs> pointing that out for everybody. Oh, cool. <laughs> Useful. And then Ashai, yeah. Ashai's in the bottom right and Karth. Ashai is fucking east. Yeah. yeah east. Look at the shadow. So Jorah is like, don't go to Ashai, go east. I'm like, Jorah, check a map, bro. <laughs> You're going to, yeah, you, you'll end up passing it. And I like Danny's <laughs> point, like she's got Essos is huge. <laughs> like you can you can go east for a long fucking time and keep going. Yeah. And it's There's a flat mountain land. range. Don't we don't even know. We don't even know what's west of Westeros. That's true. So, I mean Westeros isn't even on so the So this is Essos, Essos, this island here. You guys keep saying it. That's what I've been assuming. But Yep. Okay. And then So also, while we're looking at the map, I mean I'm zooming all around while we're live so these guys can see better. This is just gonna be the full map for you guys, so have fun so finding everything luck. we're pointing to. Most of it's going to be in the bottom right near Karth and Ashai. Um, but this is the Jade Sea, right? Where where uh, Zaro was saying, well, we'll sail across there and get some wine. So maybe he's talking about going to Ashai to get some wine. <laughs> wait, wait. Go from Karth across no, no. the Jade so Sea. Ashai, Ashai is not what I thought it was. Ashai is not east. I wouldn't call that east. This is southeast. It's east of Karth. It's east of Karth for sure. But it's southeast though. And, and east would be like... Cars? No, it's it's directly. No, no, you're looking at Asabad, so you can't see it either because I, I had a hard time. It was real. Uh, oh when, crap! You're right. Uh, yeah, I thought that was it. Ashai is the one on the bottom of that peninsula. Yeah, way down uh-huh. here. So oh far. Fuck. Bottom right. Oh shit! I was looking at. I was <laughs> yeah. looking at Asabad. Yeah, it's southeast. Yeah, that's what I was looking at too. Yep. Asabad. Yeah, just go to Asabad. How about Asabad oh, fucking us up? Nelson <laughs> thought that was awesome. a shy. What a fool. 
Yeah, it's no, fucking so awesome. Like it's awesome. Shit, I've never even heard that. I don't think they mentioned that city one time in the books. This is that's from like Nelson's some more bringing book up or something. maps and he didn't. So even you thought study that was a shy too? <laughs> no, I didn't think that was a shy. Nelson yeah, thought he was did. All three of you, all three of you thought, awesome, thought awesome, Bob, was you a shy. Fool. I did it. Yeah, because Nelson. it's it's like grainy and small on our screen. You have a good you have a good image of it. You've handmade better maps than this one that we're looking at. Fucking awesome, Bob. Are you kidding me? So hold on, real quick. Let's talk about what's west. Like, what is west? Like, we got a long ways to go west Westeros, here too. Westeros, dude. Yeah, but like, a, a shy is way closer Westeros, than Westeros. Westeros, the free cities, Dothraki Sea. That's everything. It took our whole book to get across Valyria. the Dothraki Sea. Well, we've got seventeen more if George ever puts them out. So that's true. But so wait. So what? What's her final? I guess she doesn't come to a final decision. Final decision is talk to Pyat Pri. We're not going anywhere. The final decision is you're going to Pyat Pri. What do you tomorrow. think, Kyle? While we got the map up, what's going to prediction? Well, for what? Where she go? Are we going somewhere? If so, where, which way? East, southeast. I mean, I don't know how you West. get across the Bone Mountains there, even to be honest. That looks like that would be fun, right? Yeah, that'd be bad. Maybe I mean, I guess if you're going to a shy, you take a boat would be the best way. Right across the Jade Sea. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where he's suggesting east because I don't really see anything east that like Asabon, Yeti. bro. So she's what'd she get? She got like saffron from Yeti or something. That's right here. That's his big forest area. <sighs> Maybe that's what he wants. But yeah, right that's, what, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, if you're going east, where are you going? Towards a shy. Like the 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 biggest city we hear of to the east of where you are is a shy. Literally the only city I think we've ever heard of it's the east of where you are is a shy. Okay. Yep. Map gone. All right. So back back in she's like look we're gonna go west because i need to get my throne we've got friends over there and jorah's like nope you don't they actually don't like you eh, yeah you're like a new guy so they'll probably just like join together and fight you mm-hmm. well at first then, at first he's talking about illyrio he's not even talking oh, about westeros yeah, yeah. jorah's saying yeah. let's just go to the free cities and she's like i don't think illyrio is actually your friend like he would sell you yeah and she's anybody like, over there like, is selling for you enough for the money, right price She's like, he what? would sell you for enough money, and she's like, he would never sell me. He was our friend, and George's like, he, he did sell you, you like he literally friend. already sold you to Cal. He literally she's like, sold you to a horse lord. <laughs> Dan is like, fuck, he's right. Like he did. Delirio <laughs> did already sell me. <laughs> it's not funny because it's like slavery, but it's like <laughs> he would never. He already did. Uh, Damn okay. it, you're right. <laughs> it's like, a like how do you not even like think how about that? Like, I guess that. she ends up like falling in love with Drogo, so like she yeah, accepted she, like, it. Kind of, but, yeah. Um, maybe she's got crazy she even meant, she even uses the eggs as uh, like, well, he gave me my dragon eggs. He was like, yeah, they were fucking stone when he gave them to you. Yeah, if he knew they were gonna hatch, he would have sat on them himself. It's a great line by Jorah. <laughs> even, no, so Danny, line. Danny gets pissed at Jorah for a second when he says like he did sell you. She like, kind of made her mad and like fire back. But when he says that, it like makes her chuckle and like she's like happy again. So Jorah's just like manipulating the fuck mm-hmm. out of Danny's emotions right now, mm-hmm. not intentionally. Gaslighting the shit out of her. She's all over the place. All right, is that what gaslighting? So then, is? no, no. no. <laughs> <This> is- <laughs> <laughs> The next part is of this like whole same deal. We kind of hit on it. Like even if she had Illyrio's friendship, his money and cell swords wouldn't help her get the throne, right? So this is when Jorah's like, "Look, if even if you want to head home, we need some cats on your side when you show up you on plan. Shore. Yeah, you need people there that are on your side. <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah, he gets into that. He's like, regardless, like you can't just. He kind of says, like, you need a plan, and the plan can't just be cell swords, and unless it's a fuck ton of cell swords, because if you do that, if you do it that way, they're all going to unite against you, regardless of what's going on in the kingdom at the time. Like a foreign, nobody unites, nothing invites a uh, unites a kingdom like foreign invaders, right? And I feel like that's probably true. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Look at what's happening right now. Everybody's coming together. Yeah, hates Russia. Everybody just hates. That's that's not even like a country. The entire world's coming together to hate Russia. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like strengthen NATO. Yeah, like it's crazy. It's true though. It's like if alien showed up, right? Like I think the entire world would be like, all, all right, right, put your put your shit aside. Yeah. Like we need to fight these aliens. Exactly. Let's let's close up. We're almost there. All right. What are your uh, predictions, Kyle? What what happens to Nares three books from now? We're kind we of there. Oh, we got like 10 I thought we said the Pi Priority. So, 
so Daenerys is like, all right, how if we go east, how does that help us? And he's like, I don't know. And she's like, well, fuck you then. You're going to see Pipe Pri tomorrow. And cut scene. Yeah. All right, Kyle. What are your predictions for Daenerys for the next three books? The next three books? <laughs> I'm joking. Um, where do, <laughs> what do you think is going to happen with Pyat Pre? What's he going to give her? What's going to give her? So I don't know, man. Pyat Pre is the the warlock. Yeah, the warlock, and that's really all we know of him. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I could even even get into that, but I think I think she might get some some like I feel like she's got to make an alliance with one of these groups, right? Like I, they. How does he write like? And this is me getting meta, I guess. Again, and I do this a lot with my my predictions. But like, how, how? Why would you write this whole chapter of all these cities and like all these people and all these things happening for her to just be like, "Well, fuck it, got to pick up and leave." Going west. I will tell you, there's a lot of fans that think that about Danny's entire storyline. It's like, what is the point <laughs> of this entire nonsense? Well, that was kind of how like, I felt about this chapter. It was, this? it was like, all right, like just be over with at this point. But. I will say, I don't think as, I feel like less stuff happens in this Danny chapter than a lot of Danny chapters, but all Danny chapters give me that same feeling. Like, I just don't really care about what's going on in this chapter. Even if it's like an exciting Danny chapter, I just don't care as much about whatever else is going on in the other, in like Westeros normally. Yeah. Well, um, and I think that's because yeah, that's gotcha. where our main storyline isn't, you know, you know, like. Yeah. And in the show, they can do it better because, like, here we just don't get a chapter for three months. And in the show, they'll give, like, a few months of just, like, her and Zaro setting up yeah. the thing. Or they'll whatever, just show right? Amelia Clark. Like, All you need to do is put Amelia Clark on screen for a minute. Yeah. And they're like, oh, there's there's Amelia. Content. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. We know D- Jeff likes Danny, but she's bad. I need to see Amelia Clark in another movie. I was really hoping she'd show up in. Uh, Obi-Wan. Uh, maybe Obi-Wan. That'd be dope. She, w- she, she was might with be in it. Darth Maul, right? Dar- yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. I thought she was yeah. going to show up in uh, Boba. But. Gotcha. All right, well, Kyle, did you have anything, last predictions, or I don't think there's much to go on? Well, I was just going to say, like, I, I think maybe she makes some deal with the uh, the warlocks that she might later regret. That's all I'm going to say about mm. that. I don't know what the deal is, but. Ooh. Give us your, give us your most off-the-wall prediction of what she could give, give the warlocks. Or... He has to play a fiddle contest against Pyat Pri. <laughs> for a fiddle of gold <laughs> for for their souls <laughs> yeah. they're gonna they're gonna build a a fire ladder so what's this what's the ocean of the west i forget now summer sea and then you get to the narrow sea the narrow sea is in between so then they're gonna build a fire ladder across the narrow sea and they're just gonna fucking walk all these horses are just gonna walk straight across the the fire ladder where were you when they built a fire ladder across the narrow so sea? they're gonna find the, the mage who disappeared and and hire him or they're gonna learn how to do it themselves? i think it's gonna have to be a deal with the warlock <laughs> gotcha okay warlocks are gonna build yeah. a giant fire ladder <laughs> roger that all right let's, let's call it all right, bye, Kyle. All right, later, nerds. Fuck y'all. I'll see you guys in the spoiler section. Bye, Kyle. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! See you later, Kyle. It's great bye, hanging Kyle. out, bud. We'll see you on the next episode for Tyrion 9. But now, on to the spoiler section of Danny 3. Boys, what are your hot takes? Bam, bam, bam. Hot take, hot take, hot take. So I forgot that we didn't... I'm getting right into it. I forgot that we didn't know anything about Quaithe. Quaithe. Mm -hmm. Like, literally all we know is she says, I'm I'm Quaithe of the Shadow. Which, if you're, like, really reading between the lines, you could take to mean she's from a shy. Right? So what I was going to say to Kyle in the chapter that I didn't say, which I'll just get out now because it's right on my mind before I forget, is that when he's saying, like, oh, like... If a Quaith knows what the fiery ladder is, it can't be like a, a crazy trick, right? If it's just like a common trick, it's got to be like kind of what Jeff was saying. It's like it's pull a, a bunny out the hat, like something that everyone's seen before, right? Like if you, if you know what the trick is called, then it's not that – if everyone knows what the name of the trick – like Glow, how many magic tricks do you know the name of? Um, Zero. Exactly. Like if you if, if random people know the name of it, then it's not that fancy. And what I was going to say is a Quaith's not a regular person. She's like – Seems to be like basically a Melisandre type. Melisandre is a shadow binder from a shy, Quaith from the shadow. I'm assuming she's like on par with Melisandre mm-hmm. in terms of like what just she knows. Of, maybe not religion. Clues? Just because they're both from a shy. Yeah. 
And again, uh, is it is Quaid from a shy? I don't even know if we know that. I don't. I don't she's have a, a, she's she's Quaid a shadow of the shadow. I think it's known that she's Which from I a guess shy. is assumed to be. She a might shy. say later from a shy. I think most people think no, like say that she's from a shy. But um, yeah, so that's what I was gonna say to Kyle. I was like, I feel like this magician was doing some badass shit, and I kind of like got For to sure. it by just saying the Kraken thing. No, I mean the magician was doing like that's fucking crazy. Like that's some like David Blaine. Like you need. CGI productions to fucking green screen you out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like it might have. And maybe we should have like talked about it more, but like they're doing real magic. There's actual magic. Like dragons are back. Well, yeah. Well, that's what, what you said. Like, yeah, there's a dragon there. I feel like we did a good job about it, but like we, like Kyle doesn't, I don't think Kyle put that together, that there's a relation between dragons and magic coming back. I feel like, I mean, the comment, We talked about like, it. Brought we brought it up we, again. We kind of, we, you said it, but we kind of skimmed over it. And, like, it's never been brought up before. So, like, we literally skimmed over it, and it's the only time Kyle's yeah. ever mentioned it. So um, We've definitely mentioned... I was going to explain it, but you, I think you, you cut me off, Nels. Yeah. Well, I was, I, we were trying to do the quote. I was try, And I was going to talk about it a little bit more, but it's one of those things where sometimes I feel like when we talk about stuff like that, it's, like, kind of leading Kyle to, like, mm-hmm. Kyle figure it out, and then we'll move on, and then once he does it, Yeah, we, we don't want to leave him in the water. You've definitely talked about, like, once the dragons got back, then there yeah. was more magic in the world. It must have been a spoiler section. Yeah, I feel like it was yeah, part of the spoiler section. Likely. But yeah, I feel like Kyle, like if he caught it when he read it, he would have said it. He didn't say it, so he didn't catch it. And whatever, maybe it'll come up again. Maybe we'll have to point it out at some point. He'll be like, what are you guys talking about? And we'll be like, oh, well, back here, Quaid said this. And he'll be like, oh, I see now. You know what I mean? It might be one of those. But yeah. yeah. Um, what do you guys have? All right. So my first one is literally like maybe one of the first paragraphs was uh, when he talks about her sadness. And it's like, is it a lost dream? And, like, dream is just one of those trigger words for me nowadays. Like, is it, is it like, oh, your dream of going actual west? Or, like, is he fucking with dreams now, too? Like, or is he, is there a glass candle somewhere here, too? You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, what? why the fuck would you say that? Well, doesn't the, yeah, I, got, I, I didn't think of anything of the dream thing, but I did notice that they do say glass candle for the mage, right? Oh, oh I, I didn't say I that. I didn't even know this. Half a year gone, the mayor... The man could scarcely wake fire from a gra- glass candle. Mm. Or no, no, could wake fire from dragon glass. Oh, no, yeah. one. Yeah, but to me, cool. to me, that's a glass candle. Isn't dragon glass just a glass candle? Maybe not. I I, I, for some reason, I feel like they're similar. A cell phone. I don't know anything about glass candles. <laughs> I don't think it's exactly a cell phone. <laughs> well, if you're asleep, it is. Sorry, a tablet. It's it's similar, but I feel like it's. I feel like in shape, for some reason to me, it, it's, it looks like dragon glass, but maybe I have no idea. So I think dream has just become my trigger word, like, sweet is for glow. Gotcha. Yeah, I didn't think there's anything of it in this uh, one. I'm, uh, I'm down with that. I like that, yeah. They do say sweet once, or Kyle brought it up, and I don't remember the quote. It was, it was Zara. Sweet we sun, called it, like, the star. sweet sun and star, yeah. The, Which the is just a lie. He just wants her, her sweet dragon. Unless Jorah's mm-hmm. lying. Which I don't know if it's true or not, but I think it's a possibility. I th- no, I don't think Jorah lying. wouldn't lie. The thing that I want to say from the beginning of the chapter is Danny's necklace or collar that she takes off. Okay. Is it a- is a collar with an amethyst in it to ward from poisons? Okay. And Sansa's about to get a necklace of amethyst that, that is actually that poisons. full of poisons, dude. That's actually sick. So I wonder if like this necklace actually had some anti like maybe amethyst or just like. I don't know. I feel like it's maybe just a the strangler. poison. We know it's maybe, the strangler's on. Aim with this, right? Maybe the poison was actually meant for Sansa, but because she had this necklace, she was protected. Jordan Bazinga. Ooh. Sansa was was both carrying poison and protected from poison at the same time. Bang! How about pretty it? Pretty sick. Um. All right. Next one. Rhaegal acting goofy as fuck with this wine. Triggers. I didn't like, think it was. Uh, I thought that was weird. Why was she not getting red flags? Like, oh, my dragon. It's like ward type shit. Like, why does this little yeah, fucking dragon not- know anything about the wine and the fucking thing? Dragons only like meat. Yeah, I mean, I could see why. Like, no, he, and he, he, fucking, maybe he thought it was red. Uh, no, maybe bullshit. he thought it was blood. No. And, he's like, and oh, he this clawed is great. her shoulder. He literally, like, clawed her he shoulder. Clawed, like, he, don't he drink this. He clawed her shoulder. No, that was earlier. She, he clawed her shoulder. She no. started having like a bad thought, like was getting. Rhaegal squeezes and all. her as she takes the wine. This is my note. Cause she switches shoulders, but that was earlier in the chapter when she like is thinking it's, it's about. It's very early on, and then 
And then when she, again, Rhaegal hisses at the wine, and then they yeah, get into the... Weird. But she doesn't get drugged here. She's getting she, poisoned with his fucking words of love and that's bullshit. True. Yeah, but she's not really getting poisoned, though. Do you guys think he's gay? I'm pretty sure, like, it's even more... Com- I'm pretty sure it's even more confirmed later that he's gay. And, like, yeah, he's not interested in her at all. She literally says, like, yeah, he has all these fucking dudes dressed in slim silks. I thought Kyle was, like, on the fence about it, but maybe he, like, came around eventually. No, Kyle was just saying that the him not staring at the one boob is not enough implication, but there are other implications that she brings up. Well, just looking for that quote, I, I went down a rabbit hole of theories today, and I heard a, a, a bunch that were just nonsense, but two that I... One that I really like and one that I would, I'm going to pay attention for. The one that I'm going to pay attention for is a theory that Brennan Tully's gay. And like that's, Blackfish, that's, yeah, and that's part of the reason why he like spurned the marriage proposal and stuff. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Rhaegal. I, mean, I, I thought of that before. Rhaegal oh, hissed and dug sharp black claws into her bare shoulder as Danny stretched out a hand for the wine. And then he sniffs it and yells. And then he sniffed it and hissed later on. So what do you think it means? He's like he's trying to tell her, like, "Yo, fuck this dude!" Like, don't listen to what he's saying. He does keep feeding her wine, which is weird. What's he trying to do? He's piping her with wine. Yeah, the whole chapter. He's is trying to, to like get her drunk enough to intoxicate her to then be like, "All right, yeah, I'll marry you." Oh, and get the marriage. The... Maybe yeah, maybe he's trying to get her drunk enough to get the marriage proposal in. I didn't think that. That's a good call though, because she's young too. She's what, 14, 15? She can't be sipping that much wine. Sansa's 15, only allowed yeah. to have one cup. I mean, she's been a queen. She's literally been drinking wine probably for two years now. And she's had um, mare's milk or whatever, which is much stronger. Yeah, fermented mare's milk. Yeah. All right. Those were my two big ones. Uh, the last thing, and it might be one of the things that we talk about, is the truth in a shy. Like, what the fuck is the truth in a shy? So yeah, we're gonna talk a lot about Quaithy. So that's all I have. Those are all my notes. All right, so I'm just all gonna... right, before I go there, or we go off the deep end, where's Marina? <laughs> I was trying to find it in the map earlier. Here's Carthclaw, and then Marine is over here to the west, up bro, around Gascar. Far as shit, bro. Yeah, but they go via land. Uh, so well, they go via shit. sea to Astapor, I guess. They do. They go via sea to Astapor. Then they go to land a marine. And they stop at Yunkai first, right? Yep. So Karth, is that where she gets the Unsullied? Or is that Astapor, Astapor? Unsullied, Yunkai, take over, Marine, take over. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yep. So basically, and they're saying go with Shy. And one thing I'll say since we're spoiled section, George has said, apparently, that. George don't know shit. When asked if we will ever see a Shy in the books, he says. Only in dreams or memories, if at all. Okay. So Danny, tell them, tell that basically means finish writing. That basically means Danny isn't going. I think he said that in like 2012. I think that basically means Danny isn't ever going to a shy though. She's not physically going to go there. Can she dream travel there? Well, I think if you're getting Brand memories, takes her. if you're getting memories, there we do have one POV chapter who's been to a shy. She's only had one POV. Uh, the fucking uh, Marwin Euron. Melisandre, <laughs> neither of those two characters have POV. How do you know the dude who sailed around <laughs> the whole fucking been to a globe? <laughs> what? Fucking Marwin's probably been to a shot. Theon's uncle. Euron. Euron. Euron definitely Euron fucking. POV chapters, though. Well, fuck you. They might be coming up. I thought Marwin might have had a prologue, but I kind of forget. You guys. All right. Uh, another short one I had is just because Danny's dressing up as the Quaithy or as the Karth people. Danny does it in... She has to do some shit in Marine that she doesn't like, and she tells somebody, if you want to be the king of the rabbits, you should don your floppy ears, and she makes like reference to it a few times. I think mm-hmm. I've referenced this before in the podcast. Is like this maybe, the first time she's donned her floppy ears? I think she. I think I referenced it in book one, maybe when she started doing... accepting the dothraki culture more and like becoming the khaleesi like she started wearing the painted mm-hmm. vests instead of like the silks and you know that you know what i mean mm-hmm. so I, again i don't think she does say stuff about the floppy ears i don't think in, not in this chapter but she eventually does a lot like she brings it up yeah. a few times i think marine but she's already like learning that early like hey you gotta do with the people of the like 
conform to the culture you're trying to rule and yeah. probably just going to help her later on. Mm-hmm. I have a quote here. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to read it and then we'll see if there's a spoiler in it. Okay. Read it. Read it up. All those years of running from city to city, one step ahead of the usurpers knives, pr- pleading from help from archons and princes and magisters buying our food with flattery. He must have known how they mocked him. Small wonder he turned so angry and bitter. In the end, it had driven him mad. It will do the same to me if I let it. Mm. Part of her would have liked nothing more than to have led her people back to Vesalaro and make a dead city bloom. No, that is defeat. I have something Viserys never had. I have dragons. The dragons are all the difference. What is Vesalar? Vesalar is that Th- that's destroyed that one, city that where they found place. Yeah, they found some uh, barren, and stuff. But, yeah, where they like live. Uh, there was another quote. Uh, it's not really a huge quote, but she talks about her dragons and like they need to be trained so they don't weigh lace to her. I think it goes along with what you're saying. Like, is she gonna be the Mad Queen, or is fucking Drogon gonna fucking Mad's melt? Any word I look out for in Danny chapters in, in situations like this for sure. Is Drogon gonna fucking melt? the kingdom down and I'm, now that we're about to get oh, into the I big mean, stuff like the, Viserion and Dr- Rhaegal start fucking up marine by themselves so we're gonna start we're about to start getting into some of the big stuff which is the Quaithy stuff right of this chapter oh boy buckle so, up so the big one of the, the big part of this Quaithy thing right is that to go north you must journey south to reach the west you must go east to go forward you must go back and to touch the light you must pass beneath the shadow so Quaith repeats this to Danny like three or four times throughout the books. All right, so two things are really like East and Shadow, which is saying to go to Ashai. Well, yeah, so Southeast, so basically if you go North, if you go, if you if want to you go, go North, she, want, she needs to go Northwest, that's Westeros. Right. Basically, this says to do that, you got to go Southeast, which basically takes her to Ashai. Right. But she says Ashai. And like never, ever, ever is a prophecy like guessed immediately right by the character. So right. I almost say Ashai is not what uh, what she means at all. Uh, period. Ash-a-baba. Just because. Go just, to Ashababa. <laughs> no. Ashababa. Ashabad. Just, just because. Ash-a-bad. Just because Danny says Ashai, I almost think that's it's a hundred. There's a hundred percent chance that that's not the right place, except for the fact that when Quaith, when Danny says, "What am I going to learn in Ashai?" Quaith like says the truth. Yeah, Quaith says the truth. You know what I mean? What is the truth? What truth? So that's another. So let's let's take this Quaid thing a few a few steps at a time. Let's let's us try and work through it before I go before I had to do any I go through any theories. Let's like try and get my own thoughts out there and your guys' thoughts. All right. When I hear the truth, the first thing I think is, what is there anything that like a Blood Raven type character, which is what I assume Quaid is. Later, mm-hmm. she start later in a Danny vision, and Danny's like, "How are you here and not here? Or am I asleep?" She's like, "You're not asleep, but you're not awake. Uh, gla- the glass candles are burning, or something like that." Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming 100 percent she's a glass candle talking yeah. person. I mean wielder. She shows up every time she's like fucking in a bath, like sleeping, right? I feel like that's yep. every time we see Quaith going. Okay, forward. so what two things. What truths could Quaith know about I think specifically about Danny? Danny's a Dane. That she could that's that's literally where kind of where I'm going, Jeff. Is like that's one of them. Is there anything else along that line? That like Fagon is an Aegon. That's probably important too. I didn't think that I didn't think about that one. I was thinking the Dane thing. The other thing oh, is, and what's his name says it's a truth that won't make you smile. So it'll be bad news for her. So her being a Dane, who says that? I mean that she actually doesn't no, have. Zaro tells her you're not going to find any truth that'll make you smile there. Uh, so the oh, other dude, truth I'm, I'm down for that. that you guys might like is, um, and this one isn't necessarily related to Danny, but I'm pretty sure the Lightbringer story is from a shy. Like the whole Zora High prophecy is an is he a prophecy. stabbed her in a shy. Well, that's just that that They're prophecy a is, a, is a, a thing from a shy that made its way to Westeros. The only reason it's in Westeros is because of the Red God, right? It's because of Melisandre, right. which means it's like a prophecy of the East, not a prophecy of the West. So, like, is Danny going to show up there? They're going to be like, "You're Azor High," mm-hmm. and like that's the truth that she finds out is that oh, she oh, is oh, Azor oh, High. She's actually, or is she the one that gets stabbed? The thing about that again is we know that Danny doesn't go to Azor High, or he doesn't go to a shy. So, like. Whatever this truth is, she doesn't find it out there. So, like, I don't know. Like, what's she, in a shy she, truth doesn't, she doesn't even go matter. East either. She might be going to a Shaba, though. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> She's not going to. A, There's a lot of books, though, left. She, could she still might go, go back to Karth, I guess, but. 
I don't know. Fuck Karth. So the second thing about Quaith that really bugs me is why be cryptic? Like if you're trying to help Danny, like if you mean to say go to a shy and you're going to learn some, there's, there's if other you mean ears. to say go to a shy and you're going to learn some information, just say it. And yes, there's other ears in this situation, but there's literally not other ears when she goes to Danny when she's dreaming in like a weird dream. Yeah. Like you I just mean, be straight up then. She needs a character development to figure it out on her own. Like it's like us with Kyle, dude. Like we, you can't always lead him to water. You think this is just a literary thing? I, think I don't it's think it's a literary, literary thing. thing. I don't think so. I think I think maybe it is. I think that kind of sucks if it is. I think it more points to her being not helpful. What? She she wants something bad to happen to Danny, not good. Okay. So it's put her in the wrong direction? Yeah, exactly. And if you tell Danny, like, hey, don't go away from Westeros, like – Danny's be like, no, fuck you. I want to go to Westeros. But if you say, hey, to go to Westeros, you actually have to go away from Westeros. Even that it's sounds kind of stupid. But movie. if you make it even more cryptic and say, oh, to go west, you have to go south. So you're, or, think, you're thinking Quaithe is a villain. The only, just, re- the only reason, the only th- thing that makes me think that is just because, like, why not just be straight up? And when you say like, why would Blood Raven not be straight up with Bran? A, I don't know if he's not a villain. I think that I think there's a good chance that like the whole point of bringing Bran to the cave is because when you when you die and you warg into somebody the last time, you get whatever warg abilities that person has, right? So like, okay. who says that? This is just my thought, right? So like, say like when like when John dies, no, he this wargs. is Preston Elliot's thought. Who? Preston Jacobs. Oh. Jake, Preston Jacob Jacobs. thinks Bran's a time traveler. I think that I think that a, a very possible thing is that um, the Blood Raven's a bad guy and he's trying to lure Bran there so that when he wargs into Bran and lives out his final life, he can maintain being a warg and a green seer and all that shit because Bran has that. So like when Varamir Sixkins at the end of his life, he tries to warg into a person. So that he can live out the rest of his life as a person, and he can't do it. He's not strong enough, so he has to end up warging into a dog. Into and the, he lives into his three dogs, or one. Yeah, I think it might yeah. be one dog, but he lives out his life as a dog. I and think he wants to warg into Bran, a hawk, right? Yeah. So that he, like, maybe if you, and this is just a theory, if you live out your like, if you're the person you warg into has his abilities already, then you can re- retain them, basically. And that's just a theory, but like, yeah. So. Maybe he is a bad guy to Bran, and maybe that's why Bran's getting these cryptic visions too, right? That's a possibility. We're basically reading the fucking Prince of Thorns. Though. The other thing is, even if it's not a bad guy, like even if the even if Blood Raven is not a bad guy, I could see the visions for Bran being cryptic because the magic's different. Because he's giving dreams via the weirwood instead of via glass candles, it's like harder, and like he has to do it. He has to like he has to appear as a three eyed raven, or he has to appear as a white weirwood tree. You know what I mean? Where Quaithy literally just shows up and she's Quaithy. So that's also a difference where I think like maybe Blood Raven's cryptic because he has to be cryptic. Like once Bran shows up in the cave, he's pretty fucking straightforward. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah. you can't change the past. You can't do this. You can't do that. So, Quaithy is like, you can't blah, blah, blah. Like if you're helping, you're not being cryptic. So let's say if – so like same deal, like super cryptic till he got to the cave. Maybe Quaithy wouldn't be super cryptic if she showed up to a shy. Maybe I guess. I mean, that's so you're just saying like, you're so, oh, so you're saying maybe Quaithy isn't actually here. No, maybe. he's saying. Uh, well, maybe she's like here for a hot second, but like to your point, like once he gets to the cave, now it's like all right, information. We're in my house, I can say whatever I want now. Yeah. So I don't. I mean, I don't know. To I, the point of what we're saying, like I'm trying to keep it. If we're trying to keep it secret. Like I feel like is what you're saying is why I'm being cryptic to keep it secret. I don't get that because it seems like later on she's straight up invading Danny's dreams and saying the same message. Like, like I get what you're saying for this situation, but later on when you invade Danny's dream and say the exact same thing, like at that point, just say, hey, earlier when I said go east, west, this what I meant was, oh, you got to go back to Vase Dothrak, do this, yeah. you got to go to his chai, and then bang, you're good. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, to, to the point where like if someone can just come into your dream and just tell you what to do, like the book's super stupid. Like, no one's reading this. Well, hold on. Just because they can come in and tell you what to do doesn't mean you have to fucking listen. I don't know. So, here we go. Let's get into some of the big fan theories about Quaith. Ready. Do it. She's Danny's mom. She's Danny from the future. She's Melisandre's twin. Time traveling Danny. I like that. Time traveling Danny. That is one. Quaith, there is a, there is a theory. Get the fuck out of here. I, this is not one that I was going to discuss, but there is a theory that Quaith is time traveling Danny. So Danny's going back, and that's why she has the mask on. Danny's going back in time 
to give herself information to like lead herself on a certain path to make sure a certain kind of like time tra- exactly the same idea as time traveling brand right uh i don't i don't know if i buy it i really looked into it but sure. her eyes are like stars though they're not purple so th- there's one big theory that there's there's a couple theories that quaith is a character from already existing one of the characters you guys are going to know and i think you're going to get guess right away i don't think you're going to know it, but you're going to guess it right away another one i don't think you're going to even know who it is magi not magi is she an actual woman? Yeah, a woman. Do we know her? Yeah, Mil- Ashara. Melisandre. Ashara. Uh, I thought you were saying Ashara was the girl in the Ashara boat. Ashara was the, the nurse. Lamore. Lamore. I'm just saying these are all. Theories. How many like, girls can this girl be? <laughs> I'm just, she can't be all of them. She jumped out of a building. They saw her jump. She jumped off a cliff. I don't think that's the biggest fan theory. The biggest fan theory is that she is the person that you guys aren't going to know when I say it. I think is Shiera Sea Star. Fuck her. Well, do you know who that is? I know that bitch. No, I forget. It sounds familiar. <laughs> the fuck though. is Shiera Sea Star? What the fuck are we talking Shiera about? Shiera Sea Star is Blood Dorn, Raven. Right? No, she is Blood Raven's sister. So she is another one of the bastards of Aegon the Fourth. Oh God. So oh, so brother and sister are fighting. That That's black fire. Sick. First off, they used to fuck. She also used to fuck Bittersteel, who is Black Blood Raven's like nemesis. Like those two hated each other. So two of the half brothers, they, they bitter still was another half brother. Two half brothers hated each other. Uh, one of the sisters, one of the half sisters, was fucking both of them and a bunch of other people. Anne was said to be like the most beautiful person. Anne was a sorceress. So is she is she old as dirt? Anne, sucked a bunch Anne, of dick. Anne Bloodraven asked her to marry him a bunch of times. And it was said that when Bloodraven was the hand of the king, like so in Aegon during the Aegon Duncan Egg novels, doing all kinds of shit. Uh, it was said that she was like helping him like do sorcery and stuff. Egg in the in the next Duncan Egg book in the in the third in the second one, Lily said like says her name and says that she bathes in blood to, to stay young. Nice. So Blood Raven is 150 years old. So if Quaith is here, she starts. She's like, she's not that old because I think she's the youngest one, but she's like fucking. She's up there. She's like 140, right? So I mean, she, she's bathing. But in if she's bathing blood. in blood and doing sorcery, who knows? Also, like doing sorcery, she or Sea Star was said to have like a library of arcane books. But I'm pretty sure she or Sea Star also had interesting fact since she was a Targaryen. She had one green eye and one purple eye. Oh, so Tyrion. She's a Tyrion. She's, she's Tyrion. She's basically wait, Quasive's Tyrion. Just solved it. Oh, time traveling Tyrion. Time out. Time out. So the reason people think that Quaith. One of the big theories that why Quaith isn't Sierra Sea Star is because Danny never mentions Quaith having two miscolored eyes. Yeah, right, she well, mentions throw that throw stuff. that out. Why would she? Why would that would be the first thing she would mention? So it would be different. I don't. I don't eyes. know if I like this theory. I've never seen it before. But I was looking at some Quaith theories today, and let me tell. Let me see what you guys think about this one. Okay. It says that they. It says that all it is is a big riddle. Is what this is to go north. You must go south, and all it is. It's about. It's all about the. It's about the Stark's journey. So to go north, you must go south. Like different different characters. To okay. go north, you must go south. Who does that? This this says Sansa. Sansa goes south and then becomes the queen of the in the show. Goes south okay. and becomes the queen of the north. To reach the west, you must go east. Arya. Arya. To go forward, you must go back. That says well, no, Bran. Arya he's time, time traveling. North. Time traveling. Even Bran. if Bran isn't time traveling, he's going looking at past events. Glow. What were you gonna say? How's that Arya? Because she mean, goes I mean, east she and then comes back to, to Westeros. And then comes back to Westeros. Yeah, but she was in Westeros to go west. She wanted to go north, not west. No, but she goes east. That's the what are you talking about? She goes east and west. It's there to and reach back west, again. you go you go east. I don't know. Yeah, there and back. She again. was already there. Like she was in west. Sure, I don't know. It's a, again, I don't know if I buy this theory. I just she, think it's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, but she like, came oh, back west in the vessel that she needed to come back in. Hello, does our, Jeff, does Arya make sense to you? It makes sense to yeah, me. Yeah, she went east no, to become... Arya doesn't. She went east to become the fucking... Sansa ends up in the same spot, faceless too. Faceless man Sansa to ends back. up in the same spot, too, just as the queen of the north. Back, Arya's yeah, not she a went queen. South she just comes back come as a back. fucking boss. Yeah, yeah. All right, come on, go ahead. Keep going. All right, To go forward, you must go back. Jeff said Bran. Bran. Yeah. Even if he's not actually time traveling, he is he's looking back traveling. in the past. Yeah. To touch the light, you go, must go beneath the shadow. So Jon Snow basically dies, meaning he's going underneath the shadow. That's what this says. I th- and that's I, how he's going to come back as Lightbringer. Yep, yep. Touch the light. Touch Lightbringer. I'm Lightbringer. And the way what I thought about this one was when I when I thought beneath the shadow, 
I thought that that could mean when you're thinking when I'm thinking literal for Danny, one of the things I thought about was beneath the shadow of the wall. Like what's huge in Cast a Shadow? I think cool. like the Mother of Mountains of Vase Dothrak, maybe like the Eerie, maybe the Tower in Old Town, and the Wall is like what I'm thinking. Cast a Shadow. So it'd be sick of like Danny passes beneath the shadow of the wall. Heron or Hall. Heron Hall. Shadow of the Wall to fucking bring the sun back. A long night be over. All right. I don't hate it. Uh, now I'm going to read a Reddit post. And I'll post this in the Discord, obviously, like I always do. By user, give him credit. Glanix. This is from nine years ago. So. All right, Glanix. Give us, give us some insight, bud. This is all about the Quay stuff. Uh, basically the north, south, east, west thing. The most common interpretation of this prophecy is that people think Danny is going to go southeast to go northwest, Westeros, to pass under the Shadow Lands, the region near Shai. It is frequently speculated that Danny would go towards Shai and around the world, reaching Westeros from the east over the Sunset Sea. Right, so literally just go southeast till you get west. Yeah, I mean, if it's a globe, we don't know if it's a globe. It's a Wait, I mean, what, Jeff, just stop saying. Jeff is the biggest. We don't planetos. know it's a globe. Jeff is the biggest planetos flat earther in the fucking in they the content creator world now. They literally don't know what's west of Westeros. Jeff, to be fair, let it, let in the TV Jeff, show. Let's let, well, that Jeff, in the why don't you let everyone know that you're not an actual Earth or flat Earther? Because at this point, people might think that you think Earth is actually flat. Jeff no. knows the Earth is round, but Jeff is still on the on the fact that planetos might be flat. They have said <laughs> they don't in the know what they say that. Whatever, like people. That does not count. George was like, what? you don't that think George would have been like, second. what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. They haven't. Like, what the fuck they you don't know what's right west now? of Westeros. That's a fucking joke. Okay, moving on. <laughs> this is supported by the first mention of the prophecy, see above, where Danny speculates that Quaith is implying head to a shy. Quaith responds by get, by saying that she will find truth there. Another variation of the theory involves Danny recovering the true Lightbringer sword near a shy. I'll get some about that one. What's like you literally touch touch light when you go to a shy like pass me the shadow to touch light bringer the sword is in a shy. Mm. She's and gonna you, she's gonna physically bring light bringer back like it's an actual sword. I mean that's, well, I that's what the that. quote says. Wait, right? to I want to touch the light. I, you have to pass beneath the shadow, a shy yeah. by the shadow. I get it. I don't hate it. Maybe I want to. I want to quick mention something. So super weird. And we kind of gloss over. I, I must have deleted it. Why does her wrist tingle when she t- when she gets touched? She's got the same like glamour shit that Melisandre does. Well, that's the Melisandre. only thing that makes me think like, is she actually there? Is it like a like a goose like a goose uh, prickle? Well, Jogo can see her. Basically, where I think this where I'm at with this Quaith vision or this Quaith conversation, I think it's like Last Jedi. Uh, Luke Skywalker versus Kylo Ren. Okay, he's not even there. He's dodging the lightsaber, doing all this. He's not even no, there. but yeah, but he's Joe like medi- Quaith is just over in a shy somewhere, just meditating like a badass on a rock. You don't think that's you? You don't think that's possible? It's possible that she just like not here. Why else is it tingle when she touches her? That's, that's what that's, that was my because she conclusion. has Melisandre's fucking perfumes on her. Have you ever had a girl touch you, Glow? If a girl's wearing perfume and she touches you, it doesn't make it tingle. Every no, time. you know how Melisandre has fucking glamours and all that bullshit that like affects people differently. Every time Danny touches me, I tingle. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, Nelson. I'm not saying fucking regular perfume. She wants to fucking make an impression on her, so she touches her. So it's skin to skin contact. With right. some sort of oil that's affecting her skin and maybe going into her bloodstream. I don't think it's a Melisandre glamour thing. Personally, I don't All think right. we ever get a description like this, but maybe we'll look out for it. If we get another description like this, or something gets touched on, but I'll keep reading this uh, Reddit thing. So basically, they, they do a link to the map that I showed everybody, and then it says Ashai is located at the tip of the peninsula at the bottom right, and the Shadowlands are the purplish mountain region directly northeast on the peninsula. So taking that route would fill many of the requirements of the prophecy as you would pass under the Shadowlands. However, we can see that going to Ashai from Marine alone is just as long of a journey to Westeros from Marine. So this theory is talking about book five, right? Where we're at in book five, not in book two. Because we know that Danny doesn't go to a shy right away. But in book five, she is still getting this quote, right? So it's still a question, is Quay still trying to get her to go to a shy? Which is why they're saying from Marine instead of from Karth. But 
basically the same thing holds. They also have no idea what is east of a shot and whether it even connects to the Sunset Sea. Plus, G.R. <clears throat> Martin. That's what I'm saying. You don't know what's east of you don't know what's east of Esseros or west <laughs> yeah. of Westeros. <laughs> flat Earth, flat planetos, flat plan, uh, flat, flat planetos, Yuri. Plus, G R G R R M has been asked if we will see a shy and responded only in flashbacks and memory, if at all. Considering the lengthy journey east and Ashai's location at the opening of the strait, it would be absurd for Danny to not stop by there if that was indeed her route. If George was playing it as early as Clash of Kings for Danny to head east around Ashai, then I don't think he would have said that we won't see Ashai as of, as of 2008. That's when he said that, which makes this interpretation highly unlikely. I have heard other geographic interpretations of the prophecy which involve locations on Westeros, like going to the Wall, going to Dorne, for south, north, south, a lot of things along those lines. But I've never seen an entire cohesive theory about it, nor seen any supporting coincidence evidence, any convincing way beyond speculation. All right, here's where they get into their theory. So as far as I know, I'm the first person to have the specific interpretation of the prophecy, so I'm coining it the Danny X interpretation, as it has to do with the 10th Danny, A Dance with Dragons chapter. And again, this is not me, Nelson, saying this is the... Reddit user that I'll post in the Discord who's saying this. As it says in the first section, there is one last mention. There's one last mention of the prophecy which occurs in the final Danny chapter while she's dreaming. So basically, in the first section that I skipped, it says that there's this north, south, east, west thing comes up like four times. Once while Danny's dreaming on the ship in a storm of swords, and then uh, doesn't it happen once to when she's in Marie three in a second. In the next Danny chapter, no, I think he gives her a bunch of other prophecies. Not this one though. Uh, but Queen, I guess I'm thinking of like uh, her womb, like when the sun sets in the east. And yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. Like, the the Isn't this that, Queen, that's the Miriam, that's Mago the Miriam as door one. But mm. I think that Jeff saying mm. that comes back up with Pyatt Pre, and I think it might. But this one, Quaith comes to her three different times and says it. And that there's actually four times that he, the person had left it out of the, the theory the first time. And here's the fourth one the, when it shows up in the very last standing chapter, which is the very last chapter of A Dance of Dragons, besides the epilogue. Okay, go on. To go north, you must journey south. To reach the west, you must go east. To go forward, you must go back. To touch the light, you must pass beneath the shadow. Quaith, Danny called. Where are you, Quaith? Then she saw. Her mask is made of starlight. Remember who you are, Daenerys. The stars whispered in a woman's voice. The dragons know. Do you? And wouldn't you know it, almost as all of the prophecy occurs either figuratively, figuratively or literally, sometimes both, in this very chapter. The remaining quotes are all from the chapter. To reach the so the tight the subtitle of this section is said to reach the north the northwest. The northwest for the prophecy represents Westeros, or in a more figurative sense, Danny Danny's ultimate goal or fate, her fated destination, if you will. You must journey southeast. She begins the chapter in Drogon's lair, which she's calling Dragonstone. She wants to get back to Marine, and so looks for a stream and hopes that it will lead to the Skahazadan, which she can follow downstream to Marine. She finds a stream, and what direction is she walking along it? Quote, the stream was trickling south by southeast. As near as she could tell, she followed it. Take me to the river. That is all I ask of you. Take me to the river, and I will do the rest. You pass beneath the shadow. The shadow represents either Drogon himself, giving his dark coloring, or a little shadow he casts. The second time he passed before the sun, his black wings spread and the world darkened. The last time he flew right above her, so close he could hear the sound of his wings. For half a heartbeat, Danny thought that he was hunting her, but he flew out without taking any notice of her and vanished somewhere in the east just as well as she thought. Here, Danny literally passes beneath Drogon's shadow. In a figurative sense, I think Danny is passing beneath the shadow, representing her passing of the trials to gain Drogon's trust, living with him, eating, etc. What are you guys thinking so far? Okay. Not bad, yeah, not bad. I'm, 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 I'm sipping the Kool-Aid. Touch the light is represented by the sky, the sunlight, the starlight. To be more precise, when she hears a prophecy in this chapter, she looks for Quaith. She appears in the sky. Where are you, Quaith? Then she saw the mass made of starlight. There's another mention of the sun and stars a few paragraphs later. It's about Khal Drogo. The sky is the light, and to touch the light means flying Drogon in the sky. Now she does fly Drogon previously in an uncontrolled manner. This was the first chapter where she started to gain control of flying Drogon. She kicked him and Drogon threw himself into the sky. Her whip was gone, so she used her hands and feet and turned him north, north by east, the way the scout had gone. Drogon went willingly enough. Perhaps he smelled the rider's fear. So then, to go forward, you must go back. It has two meanings. She went back to the Dothraki Sea. 
Yeah. The first meeting is a directional one that Danny directly refers to in the chapter. Danny leapt onto his back. She stank of blood and sweat and fear, but none that ma- none of that mattered. To go forward, I must go back, she said, her bare legs tightened around Drogon's neck. She's heading due south along the stream at this point and decides to go back after the Dothraki scout to the north. Thus, she is going back to kill the scout so that she may move forward towards Marine. So this is where Danny basically learns how to ride Drogon, starts flying back towards Marine, gets seen by Do- Dothraki scout and decides to go after him instead of going back towards Marine. So she's going southeast towards Marine. Turns around to chase a Dothraki guy. And then she's going to burn that shit to the ground. The other meaning behind forward and back is a temporal sense. The Dothraki and Jocko are experiences that are very much behind her at this point, but in, for- in order to go forward onto her journey, she must go back and revisit the Dothraki as she has at the end of this chapter. So a lot of this thinks that that in general, this is like a big, this is a big chapter, a big turning point chapter for Danny, where it's basically like saying, you haven't been fucking Targaryen enough. You locked up your dragons. You've been trying to make deals. Targaryens don't fucking make deals. They ride and they fucking burn people. Right? Mm-hmm. So, especially with what we saw on the show, I wonder, like, if any Danny, if all Danny and Winds of Winter is just going to be, like, fire and blood. Like, I got dragons. I take no names. I kind of hope so. I kind of hope so. Because her fucking governing, like, her governing the free cities or the slave cities... It's boring. It's a boring ass story. I don't know. Like, use your fucking like. Let Drogon eat that fucking slaver earlier. Like, I'm talking about the show there. Like, you know what I mean? When Drogon shows yeah. up and like, nope, nope, you're done now. Actually, like that was dope. That was a dope part. Like her sitting on that little ass stool for a season was boring as fuck. The show sucked for it, but I think if you're, I think if you're paying attention in the books, it's not, it's not horrible. There's a lot of like good politicking that's going on there, Danny. Has a lot of good struggles. Sure. No. But, I mean, it's a lot more time. But Quaith is an interesting character. This is really the first we get of her. I think I, she's one of my favorite. Like, what the fuck's going on? Just because the fact that, like, when you're cryptic to somebody to your face, like, it really makes me wonder what your intentions are. So, yeah, I just don't know. Like, wh- first off, whoever, whoever the fuck she is, why does she care about Danny? Period. Right? And then. If it is all like, hey, be a fucking Targaryen. And again, what starts coming along with that quote that she isn't there now is like, remember who you are, Daenerys Stormborn type thing. You know what I mean? Like that is what – like mm. that mantra starts coming along in the Quake dreams. It's like Mufasa yelling down the Simba. Yeah, except when there's – And then Simba goes back and, and defeats so Scar. When they're telling Danny who the, that you are, they're like, remember who you are. You come from like a line of like absolutely insane people who like to burn people alive and just commit mass genocide. Like that's – you know what I mean? Like it's not like a great thing. <laughs> is that actually the Targaryens like – is that actually they're their fucking – They're not all horrible uh, but like they do just burn people. But yeah, they're not great. And then the last one, <laughs> this is the joke. This is the joke one. I just – I checked it up real quick. <clears throat> Can't Quaith, wait for the, the mass woman who has been guiding Danny since the very early on has no real backstory and no face. The fact that she helps Daenerys without wanting anything in return is not hard to understand if she knows that Daenerys is meant to save the world. But why wear a mask if not to disguise yourself from people who already know her? Could it be possible that she is hiding the face of an older version of Daenerys behind the mask? It is not hard to <laughs> try. Try time traveling, Danny. Let's go. <laughs> it's not hard to point out that other people have predicted things that came true in the series. But how does Quaith know that happened? Know what happened in the in the Temple of the Undying Ones? Things that only Daenerys could know. That's true. In the future chapter, she does say stuff about the House of the Undying. I think there's a reason she wears the mask, and the explanation is just is how she knows everything about Daenerys and what she has to do and where she has to go. She is Daenerys, and she is guiding herself through the events she has already experienced. Tell me what you think about this theory, and if you think it works or if it doesn't work. <sighs> this one is by I mean, this is one is by oh, user yeah. King Bolton 1990 on a form of. So, I mean, King Bolton's staying outside the box, and like if if one person can time travel, why can't? Why I'm just saying, another? Preston Jacobs' time traveling brand video came out this year. This is a post from 2012. So King Bolton is way to be King Bolton really has, been pressing to the punch. He's been sipping the Kool Aid for the a long time. The thing is, that's what happens when you make a blog post instead of fucking a YouTube video. It's no no love. Well, YouTube wasn't as big back then. That's true. That's true. But yeah, I I think the Quay stuff is sick, and. uh 
I gotta, I'm gonna now, like the first time through, like I, you probably mentioned like Quaith to me and I'm like, who the fuck is Quaith? Like you probably, like I said, she me, shows like, up five times. Four times. She shows up and it's going to be the same with Kyle. Yeah. Just be, even though he's reading it this long, it's literally going to be a year between he, him, her, maybe longer than mm-hmm. a year between him hearing her every single time. Cause think about it. She's not, Danny's not in. <laughs> this goes so bad for Kyle. <laughs> like half the characters aren't in Feast for Crows. Should we do the other reading? What other reading? There's like a really fo- popular fan reading where like the chapters of Dance of Dragons and Feast of Crows were put in order. Like the books, you just read both those books together. I, I mean, that's going to be a fucking... You just keep a bookmark in each other. Yeah, fuck that. And you just, no. you're like, what book is it? And I'll tell you and you just read that chapter. It, it would not I be mean, that I don't, I don't know. I, I'll do, I'll do it. I don't think, I, 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 think I, I think it's a low percent chance we do that. Just, I don't know. If you've done, if you ever, if you ever uh, read that it that is, way, let us know what you think. I forget what it's called. It's like a dance of dragons and fire. I forget what it's called. It is super. A dance crow. of crows. A dance of, yeah, a dance like of crows. <laughs> yeah. It's super stupid that they did that. Or George. A feast of dragons. I don't know. I don't hate that George did it, but the book, like if the books weren't as super long, it wouldn't be as just bad. Make it, it just, it sucks when you go a thousand pages without a characters. But yeah, Danny's not in a feast of crows for, so like we hear her in St- storm of swords and we don't get her told dance again. Why can't you just make two books in chronological order? They are. Uh, that's a good question. That doesn't make sense. Like no, we no, to, no, 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 it's no, not no, in order. No, no, I agree with George on that one because like characters, all the characters have climaxes at the end of the story. Like Danny's going to the house of the Undying, and about to leave leave Karth at the end of the story. Everyone's hitting the Battle of Blackwater. Like, uh, Cat frees Jamie. Last chapter of Cat's story. You know what I mean? Rob gets captured by the Wildlings. You. Well, you don't have. To, you don't. Have to, all right, I get it. I like, get it. I there's get it, like I story it. arcs that get ended. I'm still saying, like, you just continue on that story. Like, you didn't have to split the I'm characters just, in half. Saying, like, what he did was he, he wanted it to be one big book. And then they were literally like, you can't make this one big no, book. I it's get too it. long. I know. We've had this, I'm just saying, we've if had you, this discussion if you just, so many Just times. think about if they just... Just cut that book in half. I'm just saying, if Clash of Kings ended right here, like, literally after this chapter, we're like, what? It would literally be like, what? That sure. book, there would be a horrible book. Pi at Pre. It would be a Pi Pre conclusion. Book. What's going the on? The next with book would be Pri? sick because it would have Blackwater and all Storm Swords, but like this book would suck. Would you be but, sick? You know what I mean? You can't just cut a book randomly and just be like, it works. I don't know. Whatever. But I know what you're saying. All right. I don't have anything else for the Danny one, but I also found one other theory while I was digging deep into random theories today, and I love it. And it's that Timmet, son of Timmet, is the heir to the veil. And without going deep through all of it, because I'll go through all, through all of it later. And the fucking clan time. time. Yeah, the clansmen. When when Littlefinger goes through the whole explanation to Sansa about why Harry is the heir to the veil vale after Robert Aaron. Yeah. He basically says there's nine brothers and sisters. Harry the heir's mom is the ninth mom, like the, the ninth child. But all the children yeah. above her either died without children or their cho- all, all the children died. Except for the eighth one, who is also the eighth child, who is also a woman, and they got captured by the burn men. She had got captured by the burn men. So there's nine children. And Timmet, Timmet banged her. <laughs> well, Timmet, yeah, Timmet's dad, who's named Timmet. Yeah, so, so, and we hear in tears, Timmet is also the only, so get this. We hear in that chapter that the burn men took her away. <laughs> Timmet is the only <laughs> named burn men. Burn man in the entire thing. Out of all the out of all the clansmen, like they literally say, like the storm, like everyone's afraid of the burn men. Like the burn men are like the most hardcore mm-hmm. of all the clansmen. And Timmet, instead of like burning his nipple or burning his finger with the thing, burned his eye. So Timmet is the most hardcore of the burn men, who are the most hardcore of the clansmen. <laughs> and he's got a name. And he's the only one with the name. And we hear that literally the only the only. Well, Timmet Timmet Senior had a only, name. The Not only the only unaccounted for person who's above Harry the heir in the line of succession was captured by the Burnmen, and there's only one name Burnmen, and he's about the age. Timmet 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 Senior. He's about the age. I just, I just I just spoofed your whole thing. There was a Timmet Senior. Obviously, because Timmet's name is Timmet, some of Timmet. So there's two Timmets. <laughs> what do you mean? Other people were named. What are you talking about? Timmet Senior had to be named. So I don't like Timmet was obviously named. Why are another Burnman getting named? in the in the book? We haven't heard a name in the entire book series. We haven't heard the name okay. of any Burnman okay. except for Timmet. It's not that they don't have names. We okay. just haven't heard of any of the names. 
Oh, okay. so like from a literary, I thought, I thought you were saying they like weren't no, no, named. No, this at is from all. a literary perspective. But, like George has told us that out of all the people who have a claim to the veil, they're all dead or or unaccounted for, except for Harry the heir's mom, and and hmm. one step ahead of him is this woman who was captured by the Burn Men, who we know are the most hardcore of all the hardcore clansmen, and their leader is named Timot, son of Timot, and he is twenty. He's twenty I, years I, old right I'll now. Accept a- I'll say the sip the timid there. I think it would be badass if like somehow it came out to be true. That's Timot some of Timot is first off, there's no way that it would, he'd be legitimate, right? Because like they captured her, they would just rape her, and then Timot's just a bastard, and he doesn't have any heir or or whatever. Unless like Tyrion becomes king and then like Dan, Tyrion's Danny's hand gets legitimized, becomes like king, and then you know what I mean? Tyrion can have Danny no, like legitimize. I really him. like it. I just think it would be hilarious if Tibbet was somehow like the rightful heir to the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's cut it short. Let's cut a long, let's cut a short pod long. All right, well, guys, we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, boys. Bye. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye. Fire and blood. <laughs>